Check one, two, here comes my mic. Uh, let me know how the audio is over here. Oh, double audio, that could very well be happening. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, uh, why would that be happening now? This, well, <laughs> I'm coming on in a moment. Hopefully you're hearing my voice just once at least. Hello everybody, good morning. Happy Coding Train on YouTube live stream. <laughs> My name is Dan, I will be your host for today on this approximately two hour live stream with a bit of a break in the middle. I'm just looking over here to see that I see green bars on my audio. I see a preview image of myself on a little monitor in front of me. This means I see a green light on Open Broadcast Studio. That mean, this means that everything is working well and I am coming to you live from the Hudson Valley of New York. It's a warm day outside, but the temperature is dropping. I have sorted out the heating in this garage. <laughs> space, so I'm quite comfortable right now, but I have disabled and turned off and shut everything down, so hopefully there will be no noise interruptions for today. Now before I get started with my list of things to cover today on this highly organized episode of The Coding Train, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor. I hope this works. Brilliant! Do you like learning? Are you watching The Coding Train because you like computer science and algorithms and math and fractals and all sorts of fun stuff? Well, watching videos and t reading essays and books and text is one way to learn, and I hope that you enjoy my videos. But really, if you want to really dive in and learn, um, I might suggest that you check out Brilliant. Um, it is full of interactive lessons around all of the kind of concepts and topics I talk about on The Coding Train. In the middle of today's live stream, I will come back and look at some of their courses and maybe try my hand at an exercise or two. But you can sign up for free right now! at brilliant.org slash coding train. It lets them know that you found brilliant from me, Dan, the coding train, and they go, wow, Dan recommended us, and look, all of that stuff. Um, and uh, then, of course, if you would like to unlock all of their premium features and courses, you could do so, and you will get 20% off through that link for the first 200 people who sign up. All right, uh, moving along here. Uh, nope, this is still the right button. Um, um, what's happening? So first of all, you might be wondering, and I'm on, my, I'm on item number item number two. I said brilliant was item number one. Item number two, I'm on, I'm on, it says Twitch. So let me talk about that. And I, I'm going to take a peek at the chat here. Um, okay. Uh, do you read the comments? Sort of, sometimes, maybe arbitrarily. If you see me looking this way, it means I'm reading the chat. I also actually have the chat over here, but the font is so incredibly tiny. I have to do this, and then I have to take my glasses off and look up really close, and it says, hi, Dan, you're the best. I'm learning JS thanks to you only. Ciao from Italy. Ah, OK. So <clears throat> what's going on with the Coding Train live streams? Well, I am experimenting with the platform known as Twitch. I like things that start with the tw sound, like Tuesday or Twednesday. Today's Friday. <laughs> so I've been, I had this idea that I was going to stream on Twitch on Tuesdays and YouTube on Fridays. No alliteration there. There's no day of the week that starts with a U, is there? Un, un Saturday, you, you, you today, you today. Today is you today, YouTube a day streaming. Mm, no, this is not going anywhere. Um, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm, 2022 is a new year for me because I have sabbatical from teaching, and so I'm focusing on some new things. You might have noticed that uh, two coding challenge videos came out, um, slide puzzle and ASCII to um, kind of like an image to ASCII coding challenge, which if you haven't watched, please take a look at it. Lots of people are watching it. It's one of my most uh, sort of like immediately popular videos. I mean, it's all relative what's popular or not popular on YouTube, but for me, it's off the charts in terms of uh, my sort of recent string of videos. Um, and I've got another one which is coming out hopefully tomorrow because I released the ASCII one Saturday at about 11 a.m. ish Eastern. I'm going to try to do the same tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what's in that video tomorrow coming. So I'm trying to get back to my roots of a weekly coding challenge video for 2022. Um, because I have a, more, a bit of more of elaborate production process, <laughs> if you watched that ASCII coding challenge, there's a lot more editing and uh, additional graphics and things. To, um, some bells and whistles, literal bells and whistles. <laughs> or not literal because they're like sound effect bells. Anyway, this is not the point. Um, so I was sort of experimenting with the idea of having sort of weekly edited videos on YouTube, open-ended live streams on Twitch, but I'm still going to stream on YouTube right now at least because I'm trying both platforms. But um, let me at least alert you to uh, if you want to kind of follow me everywhere, which I'm not suggesting you need to do by any means whatsoever. Let me at least um, pull this up. Uh, this is the Twitch channel, uh, twitch.tv slash coding train choo choo. Uh, choo choo was taken, I believe, as well as coding train. So I put them up. It's, it's not a portmanteau exactly, but uh, it's two words just smooshed together. Coding train, choo choo. If you have an idea for a how, uh, an available name that I could take that's better than this, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, you can see some recent broadcasts, both of the um, live streams, I'm sorry, both of the coding challenges, the ASCII one and the Prime Spiral were both recorded on Twitch. And then, if you're looking for the archives, I didn't think it made sense to just like re-upload them to this channel. Obviously, this live stream on YouTube will live on this channel, but if you're looking for coding train, Twitch, I just made a new channel on YouTube, Coding Train Twitch Archive. It doesn't even show up on Google. Un oh no, oh no, Coding Train, here it is. Oh no, here it is, here it is. This is a video from it. There we go. Uh, Coding Train Twitch Archive, uh, here. Here, somebody can put this into the chat. Uh, that's the, uh, but just write that um, channel down. I guess I could uh, give myself one of those vanity URLs at some point, but you can see the, li the recent live streams on Twitch are all here for you to go back and look at if you want to kind of catch up with that. Let me see here um, if anything in the chat that I want to refer to. YouTube's Day. Oh, Joseph <laughs> suggests YouTube's Day. The thing is, I, 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 I got to stick to my list. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but but just bear but 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 indulge me for a moment, um, which is that one of the things that I have absolutely learned at the start of this year with my sabbatical is that teaching is not ultimately the impediment to me um, really producing a sort of regularly scheduled regular uh, 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 um, frequent content on YouTube. <laughs> there are lots of other things. Life gets in the way, and I have other projects and initiatives that I'm working on. So I'm not uh, able to just suddenly like dive in in the way that I might have thought. Um, but I am getting these coding challenges out, and I really want to use 2022 to experiment and sort of find the right balance between the different things that I'm doing with what I assume will be a return to teaching in 2023. Although you never know. Never say never. <laughs> the sky's the limit with this YouTube thing. Uh, it's a little bit niche, the creative coding tutorial stuff, but you know, you never know. Um, and so for right now, what I am hoping to focus on at least immediately is getting these kind of like fun, short, I'm short being like 20 to 30 minute coding challenges videos out. I want to say every week, but I think three per month is maybe a, a more realistic promise. Um, I have something next. Anyway, so I have some other stuff on my schedule and family commitments and stuff that's going to make the next coding challenge a little bit harder. So the other thing that I'll mention, where can I find this? Oh yeah, if I go to Twitch and I go to 
I don't really know uh, Twitch very well. Uh, videos, maybe? Oh, no, you know what I can just do? I can do slash clips. That is not how you spell clips. Coding train. <laughs> choo choo. Slash clips. Um, so one of the things that I'm doing is that I, and you can see that it's clipped like at the end. So um, I'm kind of trying to develop this rhythm where I record a coding challenge. Uh, and then after I do that, I spin a wheel. I mean, I've kind of done this before. This might not be totally new to you, but I'm trying to formalize this a bit more of ideas that I feel like will fit well into the format. Um, and you can see this clip here. Um, let's see if the audio comes through. We are going to get yeah. I just did the move on spiral. Oh, no, Chris, I think you spit on it. Oh. I just did the move on spiral, recorded today's coding challenge. Now I'm spinning a wheel. I do not have a conflict next Friday because I'm here. And you'll see here that where we landed last week was the end body problem, thus the title of today's stream, the end body problem. And I, I, so my process is, and you'll see this in the Prime Spiral video, like. When I begin that coding challenge, I have a pretty good sense in my head of what the prime spiral is because before I recorded that, I you know read the Wikipedia page and did a little research on it, like very sort of perfunctory, and, and I was kind of aware of what it was before also, um, but I hadn't programmed it before, which I think really is important because as you'll see, uh, what is that sound? I think it's just the wind. But as you'll see, I get stuck. Um, a tree came down outside last night. It's been very windy here, but. That was not a tree falling down. Um, as you'll see in the video that comes out tomorrow, please watch it when it comes out tomorrow, if you don't mind, or, or a Monday. Enjoy your weekend. Don't watch YouTube videos about coding on the weekend if that's not your thing. Um, if, if you're watching this right now, to be honest, it probably is your thing. Um, oh, but I get stuck and confused quite a bit and make lots of mistakes, and I think that's sort of the, uh, you know, dare I say charm, but more that what's important for me to communicate is show that uh, this is the process, getting stuck, struggling, trying to figure it out. And, uh, you know, I, I can't remember who suggested this, so I apologize. Someone in the Discord suggested that I could do like a year end wrap up and rate all my coding, ch coding challenges from Gravy Train or from Train Wreck all the way to Gravy Train. That one was probably in the middle. It wasn't, definitely wasn't a train wreck because I successfully solved it at the end. Pro well, well, probably if I would like try to think of the train wreck ones. Um, that fluid simulation thing that I did that I really didn't understand and I was just trying to like type out formulas from a paper. That was kind of nuts. Um, so I'm just taking a peek at that. So that's why the end body problem hints here. So let me come back to that because I am going down my list. I talked about Twitch. So um, the other thing that I am working on is I will soon be probably next week or a, you know March 1st, maybe let's just put a date on it. I will be putting out a big survey. Well, I don't know if big is the right word. I'll be putting out a regularly sized <laughs> survey for the Coding Train viewers and community. It's gonna have lots of questions about what videos you like, what, what do you like about the live streams, what do you don't like. I'm really trying to pare down and focus on what I think is, uh, not just like what is most popular with the audience, so I'm not just gonna like do, uh, you, you know, sort of go in the, I, I try to fight against the urge to just go in the direction of clicks, although I can't help myself most of the time. <laughs> um, but um, I want to hear from you and kind of figure out what makes the most sense and whether you prefer Twitch or YouTube for the live streams. Do you like the coding challenges? Do you like the tutorial videos? Um, somebody in the chat at, uh, earlier said, um, and Steve Parker is asking, let's see if this button works. Did not work. I have a button on my stream deck that's supposed to post a link to the Discord <laughs> in the chat. It doesn't. It's just thecodingtrain.com slash Discord or discord.gg slash coding train. Those will take you to the coding train discord. Um, you can barely hear me. Turn up your volume. All right, I, Mike gained is a tad low. I see that. I worry because I really hate it when it's peaking. So here's the deal, people. I will gladly turn up my, by the way, I ordered a new mic. <laughs> this is like a pretty old lab and I was having all sorts of interference and I, I ordered a higher quality one. I need to do a lot of soundproofing in here still because it is quite echoey. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, so. 
Sound will be different after today's stream, but I will turn the volume up for all of you. I'm doing that right now. I turned up the gain here. So, um, but I would really like you to let me know if, if any distortion or peaking happens. It's like just a pet peeve of mine. It really bothers me. Doesn't really, it's not so great to like have it so low that we don't hear that because then, anyway. Um, but hopefully that helps. So, um, somebody in the chat, it was a while ago, and I filed this in the back of my brain briefly, asked about like, oh, what about a series about processing for the pie? So I would like to get back, and today is a little toe dip into that. <laughs> I would like to get back to recording sort of more tutorial series that are like chunks of videos that are sequenced that build upon each other. And I think where I'm landing is I'm going to do much less production value on those. And by production value, image, image and sound is kind of the same across the board. But in terms of the amount of editing and anima additional animation, I'm kind of leaving those for the coding challenge videos, um, and especially videos that are, have the potential to be more evergreen. Because, for example, I put a lot of effort into those Discord bot tutorials that I made, and they're basically completely irrelevant because Discord updated their API. Uh, anyway, and, and I also just want to be able to make those faster. So I hope to be getting uh, some clipping now. OK, so just going to turn it down a tiny bit. There is a slight buzz. Um, I should, so hope, um, I'm going to ask about that in a second. But um, I, um, oh my goodness, Pi Day is coming up. Holy, OK, adding this to my list. Because I actually am going, I will be traveling. I have done so little traveling in the few years, but I think that I have a chance to do some in March. Um, and I will be doing some traveling. Um, uh, I will be away on Pi Day. So there will not be, almost definitely not be a Pi Day live stream. But I should prepare a coding challenge in advance of that to release on Pi Day. And I better record that. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to add, I'll just do a, a wheel spin of Pi Day ideas just for Pi Day. So I, I'm, I'm in the market. I have no idea for what I plan to do for Pi Day this year. <laughs> so I'm in the market for something. Usually I just take something that like Stand Up Maths or 3 Blue 1 Brown or some other YouTube channel did years ago. And I'm like, let me make my own version of that. But uh, um, yeah, Pi Day on a train. I will not be on a train. Like I, 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 my preferred method, it will come as no surprise to you, of travel is train. I really, um, uh, my dream actually, I would really like to go to Japan this summer. I'm just putting that out into the universe. <laughs> if anyone wants to invite me to anything. Um, and I really want to go on uh, the, the trains in Japan. I've never been to Japan. Um, got some wonderful trains in Europe that I've been on. Mwah! Oh, I love that TGV. Uh, <laughs> is that still a, like, is that a, a, a relevant, a, 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 a timely reference, or is like this not anything anybody rides or says anymore? Okay, be time traveling. What is the keyboard shortcut for commenting out multiple lines at once? Uh, command slash, I believe. Uh, all right, so where are we on my list? Oh, the survey. So the survey will be coming out. Be on the lookout for that. Please fill it up. I'm trying to think of what a good incentive will be. I mean, the only thing that we came up with so far is like, uh, uh, we'll pick some random people to fill out the survey to send them coding train stickers. But if there's something you would like, um, you know, a shout out, a little video hello, I don't know. I'm happy to do any of those things. I'm getting a text message here. I don't know what that is. Um, um, OK. Um, all right, so hmm, looking at my list, and I'm looking at the time. Um, Brandon asked, do you want to derive pi or just do something fun with pi? So <laughs> yes to I want to do something fun with pi. Now, deriving pi could be doing something fun with pi. <laughs> so it just, it, uh, um, it's important to me, I, so it's, it's not a Pi Day video if it doesn't sort of center around the number Pi in some way. Um, and I did do some, I've done videos on estimating the value of Pi through random chance and various kinds of things. I've done like the Leibniz uh, sequence and some other like formula. So you can look back and find some of the ones that I've done. Um, but something that has a good visual to it, I think is always a, a nice pretty pattern. 
certainly better than the R E R. Is it? Is this train chat? Is this like I need a, like a sound drop for like, hey everybody, it's train chat time where we just talk about our favorite trains around the world, huh? Oh, I have this dream, this other dream. So I'm gonna uh, just <laughs> putting this out there. I, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't talk about this stuff on there. I I, I want to go on a train. I think they have these like. Um, I know, I'm basically just I am uh, I'm a, uh, basically just an old person who wants to go on like luxury train rides with, they don't have to be luxury, I just want them to have beautiful views and landscapes. And I think they have some uh, beautiful like kind of like tourist train rides. I want the equivalent of a cruise that's on a boat but on a train. <laughs> and cruises aren't for me, I don't think. Um, I mean, I like boats, I like water. What, what am I even talking about right now? <laughs> Scotland, I hear, this is, a, this is another uh, little fantasy of mine to go on a Beautiful train ride through, I don't know, the Scottish Highlands or something. Is that a thing? <laughs> Somebody will tell me. Um, all right, so one thing that I want to do is talk about community contributions. So first of all, I need, <laughs> Corey says, by the way, this is a very relatable comment. Corey says, this is, oh, I'm, I'm, I have a space heater under me, which is not on, but I keep kicking it. Um, LOL, this is so strange. I'm used to watching you at 2x speed. Yes, apologies. This probably sounds like I'm speaking like this to you. My children's favorite pastime, although we haven't done this in quite a while, is to take my videos and put them on like 0.25 or 0.5x because they think I sound ridiculous. So um, Hogwarts train in Scotland. Oh boy, my, my uh, little Harry Potter fan uh, super fans would, uh, in my household would love that. Uh, train from Spain to Turkey. Um, I took a beautiful train in Norway. It was from Oslo to Alessand, I believe. I think that was the route. It was absolutely incredible. Um, okay. <laughs> um, let me have a little sip of my a coffee drink. Train to the Highlands is my travel dream, says Chris Sears. I want to go to Loch Ness. So I actually have been to Loch Ness. Uh, um, I was in Scotland once, and uh, it was, that, was, I, I, that was an amazing trip. Um, but there were no trains involved in that trip. Train from, this is awesome, these like, uh, these train recommendations. I mean, if I could go on like a world tour, this is, my, okay, if I could just go on like a world tour, of trains and like do coding videos while I'm on the train. I mean, oh, that's what I should have been doing on sabbatical. I have children who need to be driven to school and they need breakfast made for them. So I can't just go travel the world on trains for the whole year. I mean, maybe when, maybe when I, uh, maybe this is more of a like a retirement or when, they, when they're off on their own, if they ever move out and escape the nest, then I could do that. <laughs> If you came to India, check out our local trains in Mumbai. I would love to visit India. Uh, there's a train that goes all the way across Canada. Welcome to, I really need, okay, hold on. I, I think I got it. Uh, where is it? Hold on, just give me a minute here. I'm looking at my soundboard. Uh, no. no, scary music. That's not the train sound effect. Uh, I had a whole like, I guess I never, when I redid this studio, I never brought the, my train sound effects here. No. No. All right, sorry, I was gonna, uh, I was gonna, I don't know what I was gonna do, but it was gonna be great. All right, uh, all right, on to my next item on my list. Why did my computer go to sleep? <laughs> am I not plugged in? No, I am plugged in. Um, okay, so let's go to the Coding Train YouTube page, uh, which I redid a little bit, by the way, so I guess I'm live streaming right now. Whoa, there's a lot of people watching. <laughs> Maybe I should stick to streaming on YouTube. <laughs> Don't have these numbers on Twitch. Uh, um, so I, I was kind of redoing this homepage here to try to make it a little bit like, you know, oh, start learning here, and here are the coding challenges. Some of the other playlists that I recommend, my popular videos. Why was I going here? Uploads, yes. So I want to go to this video. And um, I want to uh, click over here. So in every video, you will see a link that goes to thecodingtrain.com. Now I'm a little bit delayed 
The reason why I'm bringing this up, and it's a little bit unfortunate because I would love to be showing you the new website, but I'm going to click over to the current existing website. The new website will have the same content, but a different design and will be featuring your work more. And we'll even have a, a, a probably a different uh, a way that you can submit without having to do a GitHub pull request, although you could still do that. Um, so this is the coding challenge. And if I go here, this is here. Where's the like, I'm going to cry uh, um, sound. Uh, let's, uh. <laughs> it seems like there haven't been made yet any variations based on this coding challenge by the community yet. Now, first of all, that's a very awkward sentence. <laughs> so I will be rewriting all the language on the new website. But I'm shocked. I'm shocked. And dare I say appalled. No, I'm not appalled. That um, this video, which is one of my more popular ones, which I think is ripe for you to remix and make your own version of, um, doesn't have any yet. Now, in fairness, this came out a week ago. I haven't really been pushing the community contribution thing. One thing I would love to hear suggestions for is um, how, what should I call these? So uh, community contributions I don't really like. I mean, that's what they are literally, and I could, you know, that could be a, a way that we refer to them. But uh, I've got my little notebook here. So if you have a good idea, I'd like to hear it now. By the way, I think I'm going to stick with the coding challenges. I was going to try to rename them coding journeys. I, everybody suggested coding adventures, and I don't know if you're trolling me or not, but that's Sebastian Lag's thing, and they're amazing. I'm not calling my things coding adventures. Coding journeys is probably a little bit too close to that, frankly. Uh, people had some great ideas like choo choo challenge, coding choo choo challenge. I don't remember what that one was. But um, community contributions, could they be like uh, passenger manifest? I don't think that really works. I don't know. So give me your ideas, but please submit them. And since we don't have any to feature today, I would like to do more of, uh, I'm going to be featuring them on the website more prominently. So get yours in, uh, and they'll be on the new website. But um, what I would like to do is uh, go ahead and look at the comments. So I like to, um, so I want to take a little time. Let's allow my, me, um, whoops, it's 1030. Let's try to take. Something with the word conductor, train, um, uh, something about trains, <laughs> contributions. Contributions is not about, so, um, uh, so, by the way, what is going on with my recommendations today? Interesting. Um, so, ooh, oh, this is new. I have not seen this. That's kind of cool. Now, are there supposed to be like little thumbnails there about what's going on? I like this. Little chapters. That's cool. Um, so let's take a look at your comments, which are mostly about like keeping it coding challenge, but there was some, oh. Oh, just want to zoom in here a little bit. There we go. Ah! I guess I have to go down. Yeah, there we go. Um, let's take a look at, um, see if there's, there, I know there were some interesting technical questions and things that were pointed out that I can discuss. Um, all I can hear is the hot, hot, hot chocolate song for Polar Express. I have no idea what that is. Does it go like this? Hot, 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 hot chocolate on the train. You know, back in the day, people would make all these remi musical remixes of me doing weird stuff in videos. It just doesn't happen anymore. Did all the talent, musically talented viewers go off and become sensations? They don't have time anymore for. All right. Um, all right. Messed around with the, some of the ASCII shading characters and found that this combo works great. Ooh, let's try this. Um, so let's go back. So uh, you know, one thing you should know that when you, if you're looking for the code, and this will be different on the new website, but the same stuff will be there. If you're looking for the code for any particular video, if you find the corresponding page on the website, um, you will see the different um, ways to view the code here. So if I look at, I want to look at just the ASCII video one. Um, so in case you missed this video, um, you can see what it is. And uh, I do need to give, so it is, uh, here, here we go. I am making a sort of like ASCII render of myself, but I have this 
variable. God, that is so windy outside. So let's try this suggestion and see what we get. Oh, that's cool. Wow, that is wild. I love this. Um, yeah, not much more to say about, but thank you for this excellent suggestion. Um, I mean, it's much more like a pixelated version of the image. I'm like kind of looking in close. But that is really, I love that. Thank you for this. Um, and I'm going to leave that as a comment. I'm going to go back to where I left the video with this particular um, set of characters. Um, let me go back and sort of see that um, people are uh, edge recognition. Yeah, this would be interesting. So one thing that I didn't do with this video that I would love to see if anybody, um, passenger proposition. Um, one thing that um, I didn't, what, didn't do is if you look at ASCII art that people are making very carefully with sort of like hand selection or sort of manual curation of the characters, the characters often really have meaning in terms of the contour of the thing that's being drawn. Um, like if I just search like ASCII cat, I'm sure you know, we would see things like this. So this is not at all what I did. This would be a fascinating thing to try to do. I wonder if there is like a machine learning approach to this where we could train a model to have sort of photographic images and their ASCII counterpoints, counterparts. That would be, let me write that down. ASCII art ML model, projects that I will never get to, goes on the list here. Um, um, so I didn't do that, but I would love to see if anybody has an idea um, to how to do that. Um, um, thank you, Chris, for this very nice feedback. Um, coding challenge, coding challenge. Right, so this was pointed out. I was very focused on figuring out how to, when I'm making this sort of like HTML DOM version of the ASCII characters, how to deal with non-breaking spaces, and I could have just used white space pre as a CSS property. 3D objects ASCII style, that would be awesome. See, you could do this. As your, I, this is what I want. I want all of you to make the things you're suggesting. Um, code stations, I like that. Um, OK, people are really mostly talking about the name, which I really appreciate. But part of me wonders if this video is just popular, because at the beginning of it, I said, let me know what do you think I should call this series. And I'm like flooded with comments about that. So like the YouTube uh, thing, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the wizard behind the curtain at YouTube is like, oh, lots of comments on this video. Keep suggesting it. So I just need to, at the beginning of every video, be like, what do you think of my hair today? Please let me know in the comments. <laughs> uh, locomotive language learning. Co caboose coding. Coding caboose, I like. Um, Hey, where's the rest of the comments? Why did it just stop? It says 414, 530. I wanted to, there were some really good ones with questions that I wanted to look at. I really, really should get it together. Am I already at my 10 minutes to, um, let me just see uh, if I refresh this page, if I can, oh, if I can scroll down faster. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, they just weren't, now they're, now they're loading. Um, I can just zoom in. Um, there were some interesting questions that I want to take a look at. Um, ah, Fresh Noob. Hi, Fresh Noob asks, could I get some hints for how to have custom running text which forms an image referring to 1057 when you mentioned writing some poetry? Yeah, so one thing you should realize that I'm doing, and this is what um, Chris Manning made a nice uh, friendly comment about, is when I show a additional, uh, uh, thank you, uh, you so, yeah. So Jake, I agree. Like I worked hard on that uh, thumbnail. Well, I didn't work hard on that thumbnail. <laughs> I, I worked hard on trying to ask around and get a lot of advice and get help with the thumbnail. Um, so um, yeah, um, I'm sorry. I lost sort by newest. Okay, wait, 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 wait there's too much stuff going on. <laughs> I had a thought that I wanted to talk about. When ever. I show an additional demonstration in the video, even if I haven't coded it, you can find that example here also included on the web page. So for clues about how to do that, um, I can show you this one, which is actually, um, since this is uh, sort of an ASCII version of 
my dog Gloria. I, know this is, I don't know if this is easier for you to see. It's very, it's bright in here. I just need to turn my monitor brightness up. I don't think that changes anything for what you're seeing. Um, I think this is like from, um, ah, why am I blanking on the name of the book by Jack London with the wolf in it? <laughs> Did I forget to eat breakfast again today? This is what happens when I don't eat breakfast. Like things that I know about and that I've read in my life. But anyway, I just pulled something from Public Domain Project Gutenberg. Um, so this is not using the specific characters to uh, generate a brightness. In fact, there's lots of extra spaces in here that make it, uh, no that add additional noise. But I'm just coloring the characters. But you can see I'm walking through them. So the idea here is that if I were to go to here, you can see, um, um, you can see the text from the book, and then in the code itself, I'm loading the full text. I called it Gloria.txt, Call of the Wild, thank you. <sighs> um, and then uh, I am just getting a character from that text, but also cycling through them so there's this appearance of motion. So if you were curious about that. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you for that question. I think I'm at 1040. Let me just uh, scroll through and see if I can get one more. Um, um, question that I thought, so I really should go through these in advance and prepare which ones I want to talk about. Um, oh yeah, this is the one, this is actually a really important one. Uh, I should answer this right now, but um, maybe somebody can reply. So the density array seems wrong. There are bright characters at one end and dark characters at the other, but in the middle, it's just all the numbers in numerical order, which I highly doubt is also the order of density. So let's address this. Really good point, and I, I wish I had sort of thought to mention this or look at this in more detail in the video. So this one, the current one that I'm using, by my eye, and I didn't do a proper calculation here, these characters are actually ordered from darkest, and there's many, 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 many blank spaces for sort of like thresholding any brightness below a certain value, and then brighter, 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 more and more like characters. Now this one, if I switch back to this one, and unfortunately this is in the wrong order now also, <laughs> so it is, uh, this is inverted, but you get the idea, um, it is very true that this, albeit, um, you know, these characters over on this side, you can see, are have fewer and fewer pixels, if you will, ramping up to full of pixels over here. The numbers are just arbitrarily in order, and at a glance, probably seven is a darker, uh, represents a darker pixel versus like zero. So um, I didn't think about this. I just kind of tossed this in there. Um, and it comes from the uh, ASCII playground, uh, which is from um, Andreas uh, Gishens. And I apologies for maybe um, mispronouncing the name. I made several mistakes. One is when I was looking at this quickly, I just assumed that's a shader. You know, I just sort of export function main out of the corner of my eye and was like, that shader code. Oh, thank you, Hero Brian. Very kind of you. Um, exploring tracks. That's interesting. Um, so this is not. This is just plain JavaScript. It's just what I'm doing. Um, and we're pulling characters from this density array. And so I assume that um, Andreas, um, who goes by Ertegifugiba, which I now know is the order of keys on the keyboard, E, R, T, D, F, G, C, V, B. Um, uh, it's just using that character because it creates nice patterns, and there's something quite lovely about seeing the numbers, I think, in order. I'm sorry that this is maybe very, like, flickery to you. Um, so I just kind of lifted this as a nice starting set of characters, but I think the decision is made not just purely out of brightness for these sort of more abstract ASCII visualizations. Um, this is more, uh, and, I, and I probably, if I'm really trying to authentically match the image, I would want to be more um, precise about the, which characters I choose and in what order. And I have seen, I believe in the processing, um, ASCII video, let's see if, uh, well, here's the git. I don't know if there's a better place for me to find this example, but this is, a, um, this is an example from the processing um, 
IDE, and you can see this is like uh, a ton of more characters, and probably I'm assuming, so yeah, sorted according to their visual density. So I don't know, uh, Ben Fry made this. <laughs> Ring the bell for Ben Fry. Um, I'm assuming that Ben did some like, you know, PhD level, like hyper sophisticated analysis <laughs> of these letter forms. Um, and I could copy paste that into my code. You could take a look at this one. Lots of stuff to explore. All right, so that's, so let me just give you a little pitch here to encourage you, uh, on the one hand, I'm encouraging you to make your own, to watch this video if you haven't. Let me know what you think. Do you appreciate all the extra bells and whistles? Uh, <laughs> bells and whistles. <laughs> um, or would you rather me just make more videos without any editing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, oh, the ASCII fluid simulation that Josh Davis in the chat is mentioning is Mwah, chef's kiss. I have seen that. Um, so uh, make your own version. Uh, watch the video, make your own version. But even better, uh, the video that's coming out tomorrow, the Prime Spiral video, it will definitely be out by Monday, hopefully tomorrow. YouTube members, Twitch subscribers, GitHub sponsors, patrons <laughs> have all these different ways you can sign up for the uh, sort of supporter community. Um, I do share uh, uh, earlier versions of the videos. You're not missing anything. If you're, you know, don't worry, the video comes out. You see it a day later. But I will hopefully be sharing that with you, all of you, a little bit early, at least for like feedback. Um, and yeah, Mark Boots is writing, it depends on the font family too, I guess, and that's absolutely true. So uh, please watch that Prime Spiral video, comment on it, let me know what you think about it, um, and uh, make your own version of it and share it with me um, on the website. Social media also, also works well. Um, tag The Coding Train on Twitter or the.coding.train on Instagram, um, all that jazz. OK, going back to my list. Ah, so I mentioned the Prime Spiral. Let me. Let me just show you, give you a little sneak peek here of just the code itself. Um, let me open up the, I think just this one. Everybody wish, wish Chris a happy birthday. It was Chris's 50th birthday, not Chris Manning in the chat. No idea what Chris Manning's age is. Uh, a friend of mine named Chris, <laughs> I'm sure he'll appreciate I made a little uh, P5 sketch here. I'll show it to you. <laughs> uh, 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 since it popped up, I think people are going to ask. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Everybody wish Chris a happy birthday. <laughs> I mean, it was a while ago now, but uh, OK. I don't think Chris is watching. <laughs> the Chris associated with this video. OK, let me go back to the spiral. So this is the Ulam spiral or the prime spiral. Um, what is happening is I am counting numbers from one to the theoretically infinity. Obviously, I have only a certain amount of space on the screen. And when it is a prime number, I am marking it with a dot. Uh, this, was, um, this idea comes from the mathematician Stanislav Ulam. I talk about uh, a little bit about the history of this in the video. Uh, program this. I have a lot of trouble <laughs> getting the spiral to work correctly. So the video that comes out tomorrow will show you how to do this program. Showcase station. All right. This I'm really liking, Showcase Station. Where am I going to write this? Showcase Station. All right, that so far is the winner. <laughs> I like everyone saying. Um, so I, until I hear something better, uh, forevermore, Corey James Cooper, when I say, like, oh, I forgot who suggested this. It was you. You can refer back to this clip. Clip it. If this was a Twitch stream, you could clip it. Thank you. I mean, we might not call it that. There's a lot of people going to weigh in, other ideas, no promises. But that's, right now, the winning suggestion, as far as I'm concerned. All right. Um, so you, now you've seen the prime spiral. I do have some additional examples that I need to make still for the video. I will probably just do those on my own later today in my copious amounts of free time. <laughs> um, but I sort of had hoped to maybe do those today. But I don't think that I can. So I, we're about to, 
get to, ah, uh, okay. So let me get to my next topic, then I'm gonna take a short break, and then I'll have the last hour, uh, hopefully, for going through and talking about the end body simulation, spinning the wheel for the next topic, and um, Pi Day. I was about to like, um, and oh, a Pi, no, Pi Day isn't a thing I just, you can clip on YouTube also. <laughs> Uh, how did you do the hearts on the birthday sketch, asks Kathy McGinnis. So the hearts are, if you look for my a fireworks coding challenge, which is quite an, uh, a one from quite a while ago, from July 2nd, uh, 2016. Let's see if we go here. And I think actually, uh, <laughs> oh no, I, I, I really don't think that I took this from this. Let's take a look. I think I did this also in, in parallel, but let's take a look. Yeah, this looks different, good, okay. So I'm glad to see that this looks sufficiently different that I clearly did the same, it's a different, slightly different heart shaped, uh, that I clearly didn't just cop lift this code. Um, but um, I remember that David Snyder made a version, I don't see it here, look at this. All right, can we all just celebrate for a moment? I don't know when this was submitted, and maybe Caitlin is, you know, 15 or 16 now. Uh, Caitlin using her dad's GitHub account, which is good, because I don't believe you can have your own account until you're at least 13. Um, and so hopefully, uh, 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 let's three cheers for both Caitlin and her dad. Uh, let's take a look at these rainbow fireworks. Oh, look at that. Oh, and they go kind of like off to the side, which is way more. My fireworks just went woo right up in the air. Like they're all going to the right though. Is it a random trajectory or is it always the same? Oh no, it's definitely a random, that looks different. These are beautiful. Great job, Caitlin. I hope you're still watching and coding train and coding. Or maybe if you moved on to something else, that's great too. That's great. Nobody needs to spend their life like me just making P5 sketch after P5 sketch after P5 sketch. It's okay, you can do other things. Ah, all right, so the way that I did this, if I go to the web editor version of the sketch, and I think I did, uh, I think the coding challenge I might have done it. Um, here under firework.js, let me look. Um, just trying to look for where I create all the particles. New particle, if this dot exploded, hmm. where do I make, ah, here we go. So I make new particles, there we go. I make new particles, this is it. And the particles right here get a random velocity. Um, let me run this sketch for you and show you uh, how this works. So this is my, and we could actually, this is my original sketch. So these just look like, um, things exploding randomly, uh, and there's no pattern here. But if I were to take this off, and I were to say this dot velocity dot multiply um, five, wind, you're gonna see something different. See how they form a perfect circle? So the initial velocities of each one of these um, fire each one of these particles uh, uh, determine like where it kind of like ends up in its trajectory before it begins to fall and fade out. So a random vector is any vector along the perimeter of a circle. But there's no reason why, and I could use the whiteboard. Let's see if this, let me come over here. So what's happening is I have uh, a whole bunch of particles that all start from the same point, and they pick a random velocity. If that random velocity is any direction but the same magnitude, those vectors all point out to the perimeter, the circumference of a circle. So if I just knew a whole lot of vectors for some shape, uh, like a heart, and then I could pick every firework gets one of these random vectors, it's going to explode out into that form. And you, we could use letter forms. 
Um, there's so many things we could do beyond just hearts. And I, I, a bunch of people made creative versions of this. I, I remember seeing them. I don't know why they're not all on the website. Maybe the links went dead and we removed them or they maybe weren't shared on the website because this was you know, five or six years ago at some point where I did this. But there's a lot of fun things and I'd be glad to go through this in more detail at some time, but I should get back to my uh, list of things. All right. Now, uh, one thing that I think that I might need to do here, I worked very hard on the lighting for this whiteboard, and I just realized that I might not have actually focused the camera. Yeah, that's better. So good thing I discovered that now. And I can come back over here. Um, um, OK. Yeah, and sit back is saying, is, is correctly saying, like, this, this code, uh, like, if I go into my the uh, happy birthday thing, let's just find it. Um, if I look at the particles, this is the math for a heart pattern. It's like this uh, trigonometric uh, equation. And actually, heart curve, I think I, uh, P5, look at this, February 18th, 2019, the heart curve. So if you want to learn about the equation to draw a heart, <laughs> there you go, I've got another video for you. I've got one for everything, except not really. But if I live to be 100, I will get them all eventually. <clears throat> all right. Um, uh, okay, let's see. So moving on, uh, let me give you an update on the nature of code. So slow going so far, I'm working with two wonderful NYU students who are helping me with the nature of code project. Um, and um, I just want to give you an update on that because I know it's of great interest. Yeah. So if you want to, okay, this is not it. Igor. Give me back my URL. It's not mine. It's yours. You registered it. I don't own it. I'm happy you have it. Nature dash of dash code. OK, so this is um, the collection of repos for the Nature of Code project. Um, and um, <laughs> I'm just, the chat is wonderful. I wish I could just like read every comment aloud and, and, and reply to them, but, but know that I'm seeing all your wonderful um, comments. Now, um, or actually, I'm probably not seeing all of your wonderful comments. I just saw Kathy and Abhijit. <laughs> They're great. I'll read them. I used to know your heart code to make a Valentine's Day sketch for my husband. I love that. And Abhijit writes, it must feel good when you search something general and Google shows you your own videos. It's a little bit eerie, actually. The weirdest thing that happens, this, is, this happens to me a lot, is like I'm trying to figure out how to do something that I don't know how to do. <laughs> I search. And I find, like, my explanation or my vid like my results are coming up to try to help me, but I'm like, no, those don't help me. I made those. They don't stop what I'm looking for. Or weirdly enough, they actually do, and I just forgot how to do it completely. Another thing that. Welcome to my life. I'm sure you all needed to know that little tidbit. Um, so I'm actively working on this project. One thing I'm just going to sh uh, sh uh, um, show, just really quickly mention, is I'm working on a new method to have a draft of the book in Notion to make writing a little bit easier. This has actually been pioneered by um, folks at ITP and other books that people are working on. It's not my idea. Um, and then the, the Notion project automatically comes back into GitHub as Markdown. So there'll still be an open source like Markdown version of the book. But when I'm trying to like write something new, I don't have to like edit the Markdown, which can be kind of awkward. Actually, the current book is even worse than that. Um, in the sense that if I go to the content and look at any given chapter, um, it's actually just raw HTML. So right now, if I want to like rewrite the book or edit it, I've got to be editing this HTML, which is really painful. And the thing that I, here's my new mantra. I have been saying I want to make a second edition of The Nature of Code for at least five years. The book came out in December 2012. I started working on it probably in 2008, which is just insane to me. Um, and it's just never getting done. So like. Uh, yes, I wanted to have this HTML system so I could perfectly refine and mark up and format everything I ever wanted in this book, but 
printer. Printer making noise. Everything's fine. <laughs> but if I'm not getting to rewrite the new version because it's too like much effort and complicated, and I've got to like, I just need a simpler workflow, and I just need to make it happen. If this, I, you, you heard it here. Well, not first because I've been saying this now for the last couple weeks, but you heard it here. If this Nature of Code second edition is not out by the 10-year anniversary of the first edition, I'm never doing it. I'm not doing it. It's never going to happen. So whatever happens, I got to get it done this year. Uh, I do need time to invest in that. So I will apologize if the YouTube channel or the Twitch streams go dark for a little bit. Uh, at, at present, they don't need to do that. And it's still way higher on my priority list, which I think is kind of the problem, to be frank. Um, although my name is Dan. Um, yeah, so, um, and, but I would love, I, people are so interested in helping, and I just don't know how to harness that interest and excitement and enthusiasm. So right now, I don't have any calls for help um, with the Nature of Code book, but your, your support and your enthusiasm goes a long way. Um, all right, okay, it is 11 o'clock, I managed, to do what I, 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 I said I was not going to keep doing, which, but, I, but I had a list that I went through, and these were important pieces of information and announcements. And you're all, you're all still here, most of you, some of you. Hi. Thank you. So I need to take a short break to get some water. And before I take my break, I would like to tell you, once again, <clears throat> about it's the olympics so this is my today's sponsor brilliant by the way it's not even a script i like just do this off the cuff but i make I like to make it sound like a script do you like learning i like learning you like learning too wait are you watching the coding train do you like programming and computer science and math and algorithms and interactivity and visuals and all that stuff? Oh, so do I. <laughs> if you like all that stuff, uh, you are going to love Brilliant. Um, I'm, I'm being kind of silly right now, but it is really a wonderful uh, website and platform to, for, to, to continue learning journey. Uh, again, like I said this at the top of the stream, um, videos, I hope you enjoy my videos. I hope they help you learn and, and bring some joy to your day and inspire you. Um, but I do think that watching videos and reading books, well, and by the way, we should put reading books probably at the top of the list there before the videos, are wonderful things. Um, being able to actually try stuff yourself, for me, has always been the way, uh, the path towards understanding and exploration for me. And Brilliant uh, really just has an amazing set of courses and tools and resources uh, with interactive lessons and quizzes and, and a whole community of people doing this stuff. So I'm going to just show you very quickly two of my favorite um, courses from Brilliant. One is the um, uh, um, algorithm fundamentals, sorry, and you can see that like this is basically a wonderful complement and companion to learning to code. This is a, an interactive lesson about doing an insertion sort algorithm, and um, you can move all the pieces around. It's pseudocode, so you don't need to know a particular programming language, but um, the, 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 the site is just full of these kinds of interactive exercises and lessons. Um, that allow you to explore all of your programming. Wonderful. Now, that, bit, that clip ended. It was supposed to loop. So apologies for my technical mistake there. Um, they also have this wonderful course about neural networks. So I, you know, I spend a lot of time on my channel doing uh, videos about machine learning and neural networks. And this particular course you can see here, you know, I, I wish <laughs> that I had in my videos a sort of uh, a, a, an, an interactive explanation and demonstration of how a neural network can recognize handwritten digits. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, ah, I forgot to turn on looping, so you got to come back and see me. Um, so um, let's, go, let's go wander over to the uh, Brilliant website for a minute. Um, and it's going to, let's take a look at it. Um, I have been doing the logic course. Um, I was, I, 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 um, and a bunch of these also. This is really a, one of my favorites. I mean, the thing about the ones, the one thing that I really love about Brilliant, honestly, uh, for me personally, is I need more ideas for videos. And I was just looking at a lesson, I forget which course it's in, about the Kernensberg 
I'm probably saying that bridge, the Konigsberg bridge problem, um, which is a well-known um, uh, 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 problem around graph theory and, and with math. So and I was like, oh, I could do that as a coding challenge, the seven bridges of Konigsberg. Um, so uh, um, there's, you know, these are the kinds of problems that are really rich and ripe for this. So let's take a quick look. Um, I, I kind of want to go back to this beautiful John. Oh, I love the what is what's infinite data structures. Hmm. I can't pick. Let's go back to abstract order logic. I don't remember actually do, doing this one. I think I might have just started it. I didn't really get very far with it. Let's take a look. Um, ooh. The evil core robots continued their physical fitness evaluation, but it's day two and they're getting tired. Their self-reporting of results, while still accurate, is even spottier. Based on limited information, it's possible to tell exactly how the race has ended up. There are multiple possible outcomes. OK. How many different orders could the racers finish? The only report that Ray finishes ahead of Ty. So here's a possibility. One, two, three. I've definitely got three. Right? So let's think about this. If Ray is ahead of Ty, Ray cannot be last. So Ray can only be in one of these two spots. If Ray is in this spot, a uh, tie has to be here, so there's only one configuration. If Ray is in this spot, there's two configurations because Ty and Marv could switch. So three should be the answer. You know, Brilliant should really include these drum rolls into their website. They have wonderful sound effects, but. <laughs> I got it right. <laughs> OK. So um, I hope you can sort of get the idea. Oh, I, I want to just keep going with this because they're so fun to do. <laughs> but I'm just going to encourage you. I'm going to take a one or two minute break. Sign up at brilliant.org slash coding train. Let's them know that you found out about um, Brilliant from me. There's the URL on the screen. And it's, it's free. You can sign up for free. There is a, a premium subscription that you can get uh, through that link. The first 200 people to do so will get 20% off of that. It's also a wonderful gift. You can gift a premium subscription to somebody if you don't know what to get them and they love learning. Um, I would certainly suggest that as well. Um, OK, so I'm going to take hopefully just like a two minute break uh, uh, where you can <laughs> talk amongst yourselves, sign up for Brilliant. Enjoy, uh, stretch your legs and arms. I'm going to grab a little bit of water. Um, and I will be back within two minutes. And we are going to finally, if you were here for the end body stuff, uh, that's what I'm doing from about 11.10 to noon here Eastern time. I'll be right back.
Check, check, making sure my mic is back. I have gone through great lengths to mute it multiple in a million different possible ways during this break. Oh, I better come back. Look at how everybody's leaving. All right, I have returned. That was hopefully less than two minutes, or it was probably about two minutes. Um, <clears throat> Andrew Isaac asked, will you be considering approximations like quadries? Yes, so I'm a little, to be honest, this is where my list that I made of things to go over today in today's stream kind of falls apart because I don't really have an exact plan here, but let me, um, let me uh, give you back to, uh, let me get, I, saw, I was kind of going to organize my tabs and things during the break, but um, instead I'm just going to do that with you all watching. Um, let me close these out. Um, and I don't need any of these open. Um, and... Uh, okay, so let's let's figure out what we're doing here. So first, so <clears throat> let's start here. Okay, so the idea of the n-body problem, or maybe a better search for me here, would be like an n-body simulation. Um, because there's this really incredible one uh, that I love. Oh, it's actually not this one, although I'm sure this one is great. There's a really, all right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just randomly scroll through Wikipedia right now, but the idea of an n-body problem is, let me come back over here. And I have to apologize, uh, those of you who've been tuning in on Twitch recently, you'll know that when I'm over here, I can't really see the chat or anything that's going on, but hopefully, Everything looks right. Um, the idea of an n-body problem, and I wonder if I should be recording this. I'm just going to record this just in case. Hold on. I, ultimately, I want to turn this into a tutorial video, but I don't know if I feel ready to do that today. But just in case I want to use any of this material, um, I have a system by which I can record what I'm doing to disk all the various parts of it so that I can re-put it together later. All right. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to just allow myself to be very freeform here and not, uh, and kind of let you know where my brain is at and we'll see where this leads. So, if you've been following the Nature of Code series, which I have not continued in quite a while, Chapter two is all about forces. And apologies for the shaky whiteboard. Um, and um, <clears throat> it starts off by looking at just force equals, oops. Force equals mass times acceleration, <clears throat> and how I can translate that into uh, Euler integration, which is a very fancy sounding name for the code that's in almost every one of my examples that has like velocity, add acceleration, and then position, add velocity. So the idea is that we have a body that has a position, vector of where it is, as well as a velocity. There are forces in the system which affect the acceleration, which then alters the velocity, which then alters the position. That's the core idea of the sort of physics simulation behind the nature of code. The really limiting factor uh, to the sort of like level of sophistication and breadth and depth of what I am able to achieve in those sort of basic examples is really due to this simpler 
simple integration technique. Like I'm not really using laws of motion and uh, ordinary differential equations and all those kinds of things that you might find in a physics textbook. I want a rapid, fast um, algorithm and uh, implementation to make stuff happen. So this is what, the reason why I gave you all that backstory is because this is a body. I was trying to feel like, oh, maybe I could actually use this. <laughs> I am recording it, yay! Um, this is a body. So an N body, like a two body, let's just talk about like what would be a two body simulation or what is the two body problem. What if I had two bodies? What would be the motion of these bodies based on the forces in their environment? Now, but we're talking about a very specific kind of force. And the kind of force we're talking about is gravitational attraction. The force of gravity equals the universal constant g times the mass of one object times the mass of another object divided by, let's call this vector r, the magnitude of r squared, the distance squared, um, times the unit vector r, and vice versa. So this object is attracting this. So what would the motion of those bodies be in a two-body simulation? Let's go back to the computer. I can sort of take a peek at the chat here for a second. This is the beginning stages. Um, so if I look for, under two-body problem, we can see uh, we could take like the sun and the earth as the examples. And you can sort of see there's something very similar going on <laughs> to my formula here. But um, uh, um, <clears throat> and the two-body problem is famously solved. Uh, meaning you, we can actually calculate precisely the motion of these objects, these bodies. Um, and um, let's just do like, I always see like, um, I feel like when I was, um, you know, there's always like wonderful blog posts, like here we go. <laughs> this is just one that I happened to find. We can see somebody made a beautiful kind of simulation showing this sort of solution and mapping out these orbits of the two bodies here. So um, I ultimately, um, in if, if oh sorry, let's now let's go to uh, the nature of code uh, playlist, and as you'll see, where uh, where I left off back when I was recording these in April of 2020. Oh hey, anybody remember April of 2020? Uh, I wonder why there were no more videos until January of 2021. And I didn't record this. These just finally came out. I mean, I think I recorded all these in early March. And yeah, remember that? <clears throat> all right. But um, this particular example, uh, if I go to it, is showing what looks kind of like an n body problem in a way. Like, oh, these are celestial bodies kind of orbiting around something. <laughs> it's like, oh, what if I just had one of these, for example. Um, if Let's just change it to, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with my spacing here. I, I, when I recorded my last coding challenge, I was standing in front of the code too much. But I, I do have more room here. So let me space this out a little bit better. Um, I want to just change this to one. We can say like, oh, is this the two-body problem? Uh, and if I sort of like were to somehow put in the uh, relative masses of the sun and the earth and like an initial velocity, would I get something that resembled the earth's orbit? And if I drew it with the sort of like sun, everything being like relative to the sun's position, even if, the, um, you know, then would I see something? So the, the answer most likely is no, because in my, uh, sorry, in all of my examples, I am using this highly approximate technique. So I would need to ha you know, really solve, in a sort of pure mathematics way, the equations of motion to map that precise orbit pattern. So that's problem number one. Problem number two 
is I'm actually not doing that in this example. There is only the force of this pink dot attracting the other circle. So there is no mutual attraction. One body has a, exerts a gravitational force on the other. The other uh, exerts that same gravitational force on the, the, that one body, but in the other direction. So all of this to say, is to say, here I am wanting to make a video or a coding challenge, or more likely what I think probably makes sense should just be 2.6, like the next video in this sequence, what direction do I go in? So certainly, I absolutely could solve right now <laughs> for the issue where I wasn't doing both forces. So I feel pretty confident because I, I've already done this. It's actually in the textbook itself. I could show you a sort of simulation of this two-body problem by giving both uh, uh, mutual, mutually attracting each other. I would not, however, have solved for optimizing this. I think I don't want to go down the road of um, looking deeper into the mathematical equations. It's a little bit, uh, I like to say, out of scope as like, a, a, <laughs> like a, I don't, excuse is the wrong word, but like an escape valve for when I'm like, I'm just not prepared to do that. It doesn't really fit into how I've worked these code examples. I'm not, uh, I haven't really researched this. So I, I just can't like do this off the cuff today, I don't feel like. But, but, uh, but really, it's just out of scope. <laughs> Um, so, um, so that's one direction I could do. It wouldn't be so interesting with two bodies, but it certainly could be interesting uh, with n bodies. And in fact, I did do that. Let me show you. Um, let me show you if I go to my, and I'm just going to switch over here for a second. I'm going to go to my Twitter for a second. Because during the month of January, there was an initiative um, and apologies that I'm going to have to scroll through this for a while. Um, there was an initiative called January, um, which uh, was to do like a sort of creative project um, every day. <laughs> um, and that, this one was, that was the, like I did little things like this. This was for day 30, organic looking output look, using only rectangular shapes, flocking simulation. So I want to go down and find my, um, the prompt I did for the day called space. There was a day where the prompt was space. And I basically took this idea of mutual attraction. Uh, and actually, you can see it here. This is a variation of it I did with uh, just adding some color. So this is an n-body simulation. It's basically doing, whoops, exactly this formula with like zillions of particles, it's not really, I don't remember how many I used, and kind of drawing them with some additive blending, giving them an initial state that cause, that sort of results in this swirling pattern. Um, but uh, I even used, uh, somebody had asked about a quad tree, I used some, uh, but it, this was rendering at about like, you know, a uh, frame per five seconds. <laughs> you know, I just didn't do any, so I don't know that, uh, I could probably do a version of this with like a thousand particles. Um, and we might get somewhere kind of interesting. So that's something that I could do. And then there's one other thing that I'm kind of intrigued by. So if I'm making a list of options, there's just option number one is uh, add, this is probably what I want to do, add mutual attraction, but keep Euler integration, that sort of simple thing. And then uh, two bodies, and then go to n bodies, and then maybe add quad tree, which is actually, a, um, there's something called the Barnes hut, which I have not researched in detail. Barnes hut, did I say Barnes nut? I think it's Barnes hut, I don't remember. Um, um, which is, I think, just ultimately applying a quad tree to n bodies, but maybe it has to do with like averaging the forces in each cell of the quad tree or something. So it's a slight variation on that, I think. So this is what I'm thinking of doing. The question is, is this a coding challenge? Or is it 2.6 nature of code? That's, the que that's question number one. 
Another question is, is it worth in investigating, improving the integration? And sorry that I'm just kind of not writing this well, but I was reading about something called leapfrog integration, which is kind of doing sort of like these sort of partial updates multiple times through a given time step um, that can maybe make the actual motion a bit more accurate to the true physics. I'm not super inclined to do that. I feel like that's out of scope. <laughs> but I'm thinking about that. And then the other thing, the last thing that I want to mention before I, I don't know what I'm, what I'm really doing today ultimately. I, I'm talking this through is what I'm doing. And then I'm, I'll come back next week or tomorrow or uh, stay an extra little bit of extra time. I don't really know. Um, but um, there's one other thing I want to mention, which is really cool. And I, I'm not looking at your feedback right now. I really want to hear your feedback. But um, um, so um, uh, where am I? Oh, I'm in the wrong thing. OK. So I'm going to do like a chore three body choreographies. I think this will pull up the paper I'm looking for. Um, Um, look, uh, Dan Grease did the visualizations for the paper. Uh, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Um, oh, so this is actually the visualization. I want to find the paper, though, very briefly. Um, uh, Antal D. Uh, uh, paper choreographies. Sorry, I really meant to have these things ready to show you. But yeah, this is what I'm looking for, uh, PDF. Okay, so there's this amazing paper that I have yet to read. I've sk skimmed it because I only found it like yesterday afternoon, which is looking at a particular set of stable orbits of three body um, of three bodies. So it's, a, it's kind of like a paper about a. Sp and, uh, apologies if I'm kind of mischaracterizing this. This is my sort of cursory understanding of this. But basically, it's looking at a set of initial conditions for a three-body problem that produces these stable orbits. Because a three-body problem is famously chaotic. Um, and so one of the things that I thought is, could I try to, and, and, and uh, Dan Grease, who did these, I'm going to ramp up the speed here, did these visual um, visualizations of these particular orbits. Um, like if I click on this one, four. On, oh, I mean, these aren't just three bodies. These are n-body choreographies. So these are four. I was curious to see if I could try to recreate this, <laughs> how close I could get using just like Euler integration. So these were done using, I guess, like a sort of Fourier um, set of Fourier transforms, uh, I believe. Um, and so these are just sort of like the precise routes. There's not a physics simulation going on here. So that's like a, quite an aside, but I could do that just as a video itself. <laughs> so I don't know how to decide or how to ask you. Um, there's a three-body novel problem novel? I have not read that. Three-body problem novel? What is this? A science fiction novel written by the Chinese writer. OK, I've got to write this down. Uh, Three-body novel. Well, I should read that before I do this. Three-body novel. So I'm just going to take a quick scan at the chat, take the temperature for a second here. Uh, real time on GPU. That's probably not going to have happen. Um, yeah. I mean, so, so by the way, if you're looking for the sort of like latest and greatest, most highest end, like you know, compute shader. Probably like n body simulation. Like people are doing these, and there's like amazing ones. Uh, I don't know like which one of these to click on. How how old or recent they are. But be, this is a thing that people do, which is to create these very high end, fully optimized GPU based n body simulations. Um, but that's again, that's not really my thing. Like I want to teach the concepts and give you kind of like a basic kind of bite-sized working version. Simon wrote, it's a trilogy. It's being turned into a Netflix or Amazon series? Well, 
<laughs> By golly, are you serious? Mm, how can I, how can I uh, <laughs> capitalize on that? <laughs> so Simon's saying there's no reason you can't make it both a coding challenge and 2.6 of NFC. Absolutely. So conceptually, that's what it is. The question is, which way is it branded? And what, what's its like home base? Like, is it a video that has the nature of code visual treatment? It's called 2.6. That's much more tied to me just sort of doing a tutorial about this concept. Or is it a coding challenge where I'm kind of more building it as we go? Again, both of these are kind of the same thing, ultimately, in how my process. But it has a thumbnail. It looks, it's called a coding challenge. It has the number. And then I could just drop it into the nature of code playlist as like a wrap-up of the chapter. I'm kind of leaning towards that right now. Runge kata is another thing um, that um, is being suggested. Yeah, so that's another. I guess what I want to know from all of you experts out there <laughs> is if all I do is take my simple gravitational attraction example with Euler integration, create an array of the body, of the things, um, and calculate their mutual attraction forces with the same exact technique. Basically this. If I add mutual attraction, so each body attracts each other one, I try with two, maybe I try with three, I could, I could, I could refer, this is what I'm going to do. I, I think I've got it. I could refer to those choreographic things, maybe try some of them. And then I could just sort of see how it goes with a lot of them, uh, how far I can sort of do the performance. Maybe I could incorporate this. Maybe this is just like an additional reference. But this is my trajectory. If I call it n body, if I talk about how I'm doing this as an n body simulation, are people going to get hung up? Am I doing a disservice by sticking with this really, uh, the sort of like simplest, basic uh, form of integration that's highly inaccurate? <laughs> so I'm not really doing a, uh, I'm not attempting to create a realistic, uh, not, realistic is the wrong where I want it to feel realistic, but I'm not attempting to actually match the orbits of how real in our universe celestial bodies would interact with each other. So that's kind of where I'm landing through this full explanation. And I don't know what to try to achieve now in the next 30 minutes. I mean, It's being developed by the same people who did Game of Thrones. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I'm just going to take a moment to think and like take a look at the chat. Sebastian Lag. Oh, that's not for me. OK, yeah. Turn it into Einstein. Newton was yesterday. Yeah, but see, where my brain, I'm still in the world of Newton in the way that I think about creative coding and simulation. Um, um, <clears throat> I don't think it needs to be accurate. You're not trying to put a satellite into orbit, says uh, Fishy22 in the Discord. Okay, yes, I'm in agreement with you. So now the question, let's make a poll. I think I know what you're going to answer. <laughs> and I don't want to do, I kind of want it to just be 2.6. <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little poll. OK, I'm definitely reading this book, Joseph. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm sort of stuck in this, uh, other fantas this fantasy series that's incredibly long. And I'm being very slow at reading it. I'm kind of busy. And so I don't know if I should start saying new. Verlet integration. Uh, Freya. Uh, oh, look. Timis, mihai, welcome. You're the latest passenger, conductor, whoa, to board. The coding train. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. Um, I really appreciate it. I don't know if you're actually watching right now, but um, uh, you get a random number. Remember, remember this whole random number thing that I, I, I all I do is start things and not follow them through. I'm going to give you a random number anyway. 
Uh, we're on page 314, row 15680, column something. <laughs> nine, there, it's, not, it's your random sequence of five digits. It's 93791. Um, and um, I've got to figure out, uh, these are really uh, uh, apologies to everyone. Working on getting the conductors, these train whistles. Um, but I think if you've signed up on the conductor level, one of these with a um, random walk, cust uh, a unique random walk pattern is coming to you. Uh, I'm very sad because I'm uh, no one to blame but myself. But um, OK. Um, all right, wait. <laughs> Magnus writes, he hasn't even started yet. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. See, this is the little town. <laughs> There's been some value in this. I mean, this is incredibly valuable for me. I got to like go through a lot of lists of announcements and things, impart, give you information about my process and updates on my schedule, things that are going on in the coding train universe. And uh, I'm thinking through what I'm going to do with this end body thing. But I realize that like I'm getting really dangerously close to the end of this live stream, and I have not even made a single coding example. Um, um, so let's put this poll in. It's the same topic, the same content. But is it branded coding challenge? Branded 2.6 nature of code. Uh, whoops. I post this poll. Do I have to have three options? Um, which one? Ask your community. Don't pick. <laughs> I guess I could call this like C results. All right. I think I posted this poll. Um, let's see if I coding challenge as a recap of NOC. So um, swarm simulations. Now I have that on my list. Um, I mean, I have done you know flocking simulations, but I think there's a specific kind of. I don't know why that poll didn't show up. Oh, there it is. Um, <laughs> Eric is here. Hi, Eric. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, so, ah, you're also on Discord. Great. So, Timis, uh, make sure you uh, sync your Discord and YouTube accounts so you, we can uh, give you all the info there on Discord um, in terms of the member channel stuff. Um, yeah. So th I think the real question here, the reason why I'm, I'm kind of erring against coding challenge or leaning against coding challenge, even though that's winning currently in the poll, is that um, I, I like the coding challenges to sort of start from a blank slate whenever it's possible. I mean, obviously, I'm using P5, and I'm, sometimes we'll pull in other libraries or other known techniques. But I really want to just start this from where I left off the previous code. All right. I think that makes the decision for me. And it, the numbers are pretty close. Like the, right now, it says 40% coding challenge, 41% coding, 34%. So like that's enough. Like my vote counts for a lot. It counts for at least 5%. <laughs> so I can push it over the edge. Uh, and, and you know, famously, all I ever do is do the opposite of what the poll says. I don't know why. So I'm starting to think this should be um, um, nature of code 2.6. And um, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking right now. The question is, and why did this, the question is, what, what the heck am I going to do with the next 20 minutes? All right, how about this? 25% um, of you abstained. That's a high number. Um, 
Yeah, and that's Simon is saying for the end of every chapter, you have a coding challenge that combines all the stuff from the chapter. And now, you know, you're kind of getting me, I'm leaning back towards that idea because that's kind of what I wanted with the original. And if you look at the, I think if this comes up, I think if you look at the playlist and the way that it's organized, that's what I do for chapter three. And I, in a way, that's what I do for chapter five because um, I just didn't put it in the playlist because I have flocking as a coding challenge. And that's what I do for chapter three. I have these coding challenges that kind of synthesize all the concepts. So yeah, let's do that. Let's call this coding challenge. <laughs> I'm going with, oh no, wait. <laughs> just as I swung back the other way, branded nature of code is like coming up and is almost beating branded coding challenge. Ah, <laughs> this is so hard. I could still do a different coding challenge that wraps up the chapter. Um. <laughs> I mean, I think the real answer here is people just want me to make the video, not just spend forever figuring out like whether it's called 2.6 or coding challenge number 160. What number am I on now? Image to ASCII is 166. Prime spiral is 167, so it would be number 168. All right, the other thing I could do is not worry about that at all and just kind of record the tutorial slash challenge and um, um, and um, just come back and record like an intro for it later depending on how I end up sort of positioning it. Oh, it's tied right now. If you haven't voted yet, you have tremendous power. <laughs> oh wait, I haven't voted yet. Oh, it doesn't let me vote. Uh, ah, consider that the C results are asking you to vote on their behalf. Yeah, so that means I get 29% of the, the votes, which is basically enough. <sighs> okay. The, the, the irony here is there's, there's no point in me trying to decide this today because I can't do this in 20 minutes. Could I do this in a half an hour and stay a little longer? Let me stop and restart recording. Okay, one thing that I should do, oh, code, oh, nature of code. Well, how do I end the poll? Does it end automatically? End poll. All right, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it um, one more minute, which uh, is uh, uh, I'm going to give it one more minute. Uh, I'll just put a timer on my watch. One minute. OK. In one minute, I'm clicking end poll. And certainly, uh, if it says branded nature of code, that's what I'm going to do. If it says coding challenge, I'll think about it. Ah, they're back to tied. I think the guy, I think the audience is just trolling me to like try to keep it even. <laughs> Coding challenge, please, says Ashik. Um, I mean, th this is the thing. Like, what am I doing today? I think if I do it, by the way, as the nature of code tutorial, I have a greater chance of doing it today. The other thing is the what, here's my reasoning. I'm kind of making the decision that the coding challenge videos will involve more, less preparation and more uh, post-production to make them kind of like short entertaining videos and the nature of code videos are, um, again, it's the same me and the sort of, will be a little bit more like, just let's just, let me just code this, let's edit it together, let's put it out. Oh, timer is done. I'm gonna go hit end poll. And the numbers are final. Uh, it, it went away, but it was at 38%. Oh, yeah. There we go. 311 votes, 38% nature of code, 33% coding challenge, 27% C results. All right. The people have spoken. Uh, no matter what, I will always follow what the poll says. 
Now the question is, can I do, so I don't need to do that full recap. I do need to take a look at, if you'll bear with me, let me take a look at the 2.6 video um, and just see like what I say at the end. 2.5, sorry. ...is going to be equal to the mass of one object times the mass of the other object divided by the distance squared. And I put this in one word, also times g, which is the universal gravity of the This is the one I tell. That's the one that I have to do. That's what 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 I have to do. And I'll be able to do that. That's what I have to do. So, here's the key to what I have to do. Try to eliminate the other. saved myself a lot of trouble if I just watched that before I began this whole discussion because that's the whole, that's, I mean, I, I, the video says that and I never did it because 2020. I came back and I just started with chapter three. All right. So, <laughs> I'm just crying because I took this whole live stream to like come to this conclusion. And now I have like 15 minutes left. I mean, the next real commitment I have is at 1 p.m. But I need to walk the dog. I need to eat some lunch. Hmm. I'm just trying to think like realistically, like even if I said I'm going to go to 12.30, am I going to record this whole thing? in 45 minutes? I guess I could give it a try. Could I begin it and come back and finish it later? Or maybe I should just, maybe I should just take the 15 minutes now to kind of do some quick experiments to like figure out what I'm going to do with the 2.6 video. <laughs> oh, I really, really, really got myself into uh, quite the pickle here. All right. I got myself all dressed up, combed my hair. I feel like this is a good shirt to wear for the nature of code. I, you know what, maybe what I'll do is I'm going to just act as if I'm going to start this tutorial. But um, I can uh, like put the same clothes on and come back and finish it another time. Or maybe I'll just gain some momentum and finish it now. Or it'll just be practice. So this will be practice. This is practice. I want to leave this up here because I might like to refer to that. And this is the example where I left it. So duplicate. Let's call this nature of code two. I'm going to call it mutual attraction. if I change this to 400 by 
just feel like I don't have the right amount of space here to code. And I need that to be further over. Okay, that's better. Um, just make these a little smaller too. There we go. Um, being eight, so this is good. This is this is my starting point. Okay. Now I will need to do I now the question is, is any of this this was my recap, so no. So I'm going to erase all this. So if I recorded the last 2.5 video in March of 2020, this is actually a full two years later. I'm really tempted to open this door back here. I think it'll bring too much light in here. Which will, but I love the idea. Let's just try this. Oh, shoot. Oh, I can't get it. It's jammed. Oh, do, I pull, do I pull it? Oh, no, I have to unlock it. It's not jammed. It's such a beautiful day. Does that, uh, <laughs> how to never actually record a video? Oh boy, now wait, hold on. <laughs> what am I doing now? I'm like, let me adjust the camera. I just love having the, the nature scene in the background. Of course, my lighting is all a mess now. Can you see that? Um, I think I need to turn down. It's too bright. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, wrong way. I change the ISO. What have I done? <laughs> oh no, this, this is so badly backlit now. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I see, I see the issue. Don't worry, everybody. We're going to get it back. Okay. It's just some fresh air. Okay. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, this is a problem. <laughs> I thought I locked the. Uh... I mean, if I were in class. If I were actually teaching my Nature of Code class at NYU, and I was like, oh, we have a half an hour left. Let's go over the mutual attraction example. That would be no problem. I would be no problem. I got that. Half an hour. Here we go. Mathieu is going to kill me. I had worked so hard to light this whiteboard, and I've completely messed it up. Let me just take a peek at the chat here. Uh, um, I'm just, oh, I love how I'm like outside though. That's wild. Um, maybe that'll get over, I mean, maybe it'll sort of turn a little bit more overcast. Um, all right, this is just practice anyway. Where did I put my marker? All right. Um, 
Let me just quickly just see if I can see if the focus is okay. Um, you know, I shouldn't put the number. I shouldn't put the number. Let me just write on here. Mutual. Oh. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Just write that there. Let me have a look. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty good, actually. That looks pretty good. Okay. I do, I'm a little, okay, 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 good enough. All right, here we go, everybody. <laughs> the stream has five minutes left, but I'm going to go till 1230. I've got, I'm a little bit hungry. This is going to be a little bit of a problem, but I think I can tough it out till 1230. Probably will never use this. I'm going to hit uh, stop and start recording again. I'm just going to turn my mic down a tiny bit, even though. Uh, um, yeah, people are wondering where I am. Uh, I am in the Hudson Valley right now in New York State. But yes, I did grow up in Baltimore. Balt go, go O's. And <clears throat> all right. Here we go. Ready, everybody? Uh, what have I got in terms of like in the way here? That's fine. What's uh, what do you see here? Can I let me get this out of the way? I guess this is fine. I don't love having this stream deck here in the shot. I guess I could move the desk down a tiny bit. Yeah, that's fine. OK, better. I mean, I have to look much more down, but OK. Welcome to another Nature of Code video. This one is all about mutual attraction and the n-body problem. Now, I don't know how you arrived here. <laughs> this is a follow-up to the previous video about gravitational attraction, but I'm actually making it almost two years later. I just watched the end of that video, so I think I know, if you're watching this in sequence, what you expect. Okay. So that's my opening. That is correct, uh, Daniel Valdenegro. Okay. Um, this is the example from the end of the last video where every one of these orbiting circles is attracted to that pink circle in the center. But this is not anywhere close to a true simulation of how celestial bodies would interact with each other in the wonder that, <laughs> in the vast wonder that is space. <laughs> this is not at all how actual, uh, whatever, that's fine. This is just practice. <laughs> What is the step? <laughs> this is way too exciting. I'm way too excited by this like nature scene. It's kind of amazing. I'm looking forward to the spring when it really gets warm. <clears throat> okay, hold on. So what am I talking about here? Let's just all right. Let's review very quickly that formula for gravitational attraction. So in the case here, we have two bodies. 
I'm going to call them M1 and M2. That's their, the mass of one and the mass of two. Oh, no. I'm going to call them body one and two, body two. I'm going to call them body one and body two. They each have a mass. That is what is represented by M1 and M2 in this formula. We can look at the vector that points from one body to the other. We can call that vector r. The magnitude of that vector squared is the distance between the two objects squared. And then this here is the unit vector to describe the direction of that gravitational force. So in my code example, this is the pink dot in the center. And this is the other circle that is orbiting around that, that's being attracted to that pink dot. But in the true, you know, but if you go back to what I think I mentioned in an earlier video, uh, but if you go back to hopefully when I talked about Newton's laws and how forces occur in pairs, the gravitational force that two exerts on one, pulling it towards it, one exerts on two, pulling it towards this. And if we have two bodies, if we have two bodies that have no other, oh, sorry. So if we have two bodies, like one and two here, and there are no other forces in the environment, there's no air resistance, there's no other things, other bodies, the pure essence of just the gravitational forces that these two bodies exert on each other and what motion would occur is known as the two-body problem. <laughs> Why did I draw all those stars? What do I want to say next? Now, one thing I should mention, one thing I should mention now, one thing I'd like to mention, if you were about to go and do some research about the two-body problem, you would discover that it is a solved problem that the paths of the motion of these bodies can be computed precisely with mathematical equations. Starting with the formula for gravitational uh, attraction and the equations of motion. To, to, to execute those solutions requires calculus. And here we are in the nature of code, creative coding, fun time landscape, <laughs> where instead of using um, instead of using sort of the, instead of using, instead of evaluating, um, instead of evaluating a simulation according to precise mathematical, instead of evaluating the scenario through solving differential equations, I'm using this technique that I've described previously as Euler integration where we just use large time steps, the frames, of our in, the frames of our animation, and we add acceleration into the velocity and the velocity into the position. Shoot. I wrote this totally wrong. <laughs> Let me just do that again. <laughs> um. If we wanted to investigate some more accurate ways, or if we wanted to investigate some more sophisticated methods, for doing, performing this kind of integration, you could, we could look at something called leapfrog integration. We could look at verlet integration. 
We could look at runge kutta integration. And I would love to hear from you if you try to execute a version of whatever I make in this video with one of these styles of integration. Does that improve or change the results that you get from whatever examples I make here? Please let me know in the comments. But for creating a sort of first pass at the two-body problem, then maybe moving to a three-body problem, and then to an n-body problem, I'm going to just stick with my simplistic method known as Euler integration. The other nice thing about what we're doing here is I'm foreshadowing some things that are come later in the nature of code, in particular in the autonomous agents chapter, because one of the things I want to look at are scenarios like flocking simulations, where every agent moving around a system interacts with every other agent. That's what we are beginning to do here, but with gravitational attraction. We will see that we'll quickly run into a kind of computation roadblock, because this is a problem that is typically an n squared problem. If I have n bodies, I need to check every body's force against every other body. That's n squared. However, there are some optimization techniques that I do have some videos about that you could also consider for when we move from 2 to 3 to n. For example, you might take a look at my videos on the quad tree. Um, and a technique designed for n-body simulation known as Barnes-Hutt. But I think I've shown off my outdoor, it's not really outdoor, I'm like slightly inside this garage <laughs> whiteboard enough, and I can go over and start writing some code to step into at least the two-body problem. All right. So how is that, everyone? Sure, well, thank you, Bot, for your super chat. Um, all right. All right, so thank you, Simon. When I get to, when I get to the three-body problem, your quote there is super helpful. Um, so how is that so far? I, by the way, I'm like, hey, um, love from Vancouver, thank you. I'm like, hey, this is going OK. I'm going to keep this. I'm recording the video right now. It's happening. And I have 24 minutes to give myself, my, myself, give myself at least a half an hour before my next thing today. Let me just check and make sure there's no like emergency um, messages of like, um, you know, uh, your children have to break, be picked up from school, uh, blah, blah, blah. No, no emergency messages. I can keep going. Uh, thank you, zero one. All right. Um, uh, I'm really worried about my volume is peaking quite a bit. I'm turning it down. Turning it down. All right. So the first thing that I would like to do to this example, I'm going to stick with the array. Um, all right. So in looking at this example, while if I wanted to do a two-body simulation, I could reduce it to just two separate variables, mover one, mover two, um, I would like to stick with the array because that's going to help me later. So what I'm going to do is just change the array to having just two elements in it. And I'm also going to get rid of this idea of an attractor. Right? There is no distinction now in this example that I want to make between mover and attractor. I mean, that's not a real world distinction. That's an artificial thing that I created for this idea of attraction, simula attraction simulations and visualizations. So now I'm just going to completely get rid of this idea of an attractor. Um, I'm also going to take out the reference to the attractor JavaScript file. And by the way, I don't know when you're watching this at what time in history and whether P5 is even a thing that exists, but I might as well take a moment right now to um, update my version of P5 from the last time I recorded these videos, which is 1.4.0. 
Okay, stop. Now, let me go back and get rid of this attractor. And now we have two bodies. Now, they are not exerting any force on each other whatsoever. They're just two bodies with an initial random velocity. I'm going to take the exact attract function I put in the attractor and move it over into the mover. For those of you watching the live stream, I'm going to be done in like five minutes. I mean, not really, but. <laughs> so now the mover has a function by which it can attract another mover. Just. Sorry, I'm, just, I'm reading the chat for a second. Okay. Um, And let me actually, I'm actually going to delete the attractor.js file just to keep things clean. So, because I, now, because I have an array, uh, oh no, now, because I have only two mover objects, I can write the explicit functions for mover 1 to attract 2 and mover 2 to attract 1. Of course, they're actually 0 and 1 and 1 and 0 because I'm using an array, and arrays, the index values start at 0. So this, whoops. Oh, it's movers. Apologies. So this is now mover 0 attracting mover 1. And you kind of saw that. So I think what I'd like to do is just give them very little um, start starting velocity. And we can see every time I run this, mover 1 is attracted to mover 0. Of course, I'm not actually drawing their index values. Maybe I can overlay that here just so you can see. Now, I have mover 1 attracting mover 0. And you can see this little dance that they do with each other. OK, I'm just sort of thinking about where I'm going with this. Once again, we might produce some results that we, once again, maybe we would reveal something more about this if we, just like before, if I draw these circles with trails, I might be able to, what am I trying to say here? Oh, focus on me. I really want to answer that question, but uh, I can't. I got, it's going to break my rhythm too much. It's a really good question. I would say, no, you don't need to switch. But um, yes, and that's what I'm going to do, Ellis, as well. <clears throat> so just to try to understand and see what's going on a bit more, let's add back some trails.
And let's see if we can give these circles more precise locations uh, and with specific initial velocities to see if there's any kind of more expected patterns that we might see. So now I have the movers start um, on opposite horizontal ends of the canvas. Let's see what happens if I start one mover maybe moving directly up and the other one start moving directly down. So I'm going to add two additional arguments to the constructor, which gives me the x and y components of the velocity vector. Well, I love this. They're moving quite slowly. Um, so a couple things I could do is let's give them a, a higher initial velocity. And let's increase the strength of the gravitational force. And we get this nice, beautiful, like sort of like repeating circular dance. Now again, <laughs> I am not using now again, I'm not solving for the precise equations of motion. I am not using the proper units of measurement that we might have in uh, outer space. <laughs> or uh, I'm not using the proper units of measurement that map to actual celestial bodies in terms of their distance and mass, the universal gravitational constant. But I do see this it makes a lot of sense in terms of what we are seeing here. Oh, I'm excited by this. I almost don't want to keep going because I want to stop here and just like play with the parameters and variables of the system ad infinitum. But let's add a third. But let's add a third body. Let me see what Simon says. Oh. Yeah. Um. Now, I mentioned that the two-body problem is a solved problem. The three-body problem is not a solved one. We could approximate the actual motion. Um, we could approximate, hmm, we could approximate the motion of three bodies using sophisticated methods of integration. Let's see how close we get just with my examples right here. I'm going to add a second, a third body just in the center. And I'm going to give it no velocity just for the moment. So, and it, it's, not, it's not participating in this at all. Now what I need to do is I need to say, OK, 0 attracts 1, 0 attracts 2. 1 attracts 0 and 2. And two attracts one and two, one, zero and one. Amazingly, the body in the center is not moving because its attraction forces are perfectly balanced between those two particles on the outside. That's kind of unbelievable. That's really cool. Uh, I'm not, I don't know what initial velocity to give it. Let's just push it slightly to the left.
One thing that I might suggest just to play with different sort of visual ideas is drawing a line between all of them instead of drawing the actual particles themselves. And all, th well, actually, let me not mention that right now. Get to so this is not sustainable, right? If I want to start having like more, four, four, so this is not super sustainable. If I want to have four movers, five movers, I can't keep individually assigning which ones attract the other ones. So, but I can write a loop that handles this. Now I have a loop down here to update and show all the different movers. I want to keep the force calculations in a separate loop. But I need a nested one. This loop now, it's not behaving the same way, and I'll get to why in a second. But this nested loop is doing exactly what this says. Start with mover 0 and have it attract 1 and 2. Then go to mover 1, have it attract 0, 2. Then 2, 0, and 1. But there is a bit of a problem, because every mover attracting every other mover means that the mover will also attract itself, because it is another mover in the array. So one way that I could approach this is by just saying, as long as mover is not equal to other, and this is checking if two uh, objects you can check if they're equal, meaning they're the same data in memory of the computer, that's the same object, then this should now be exactly what I had before, only it's not because I have it twice. So I could delete this now, and we should now be seeing exactly the pattern of motion of these. There's probably a lot of things you could try doing um, in terms of how you visualize this. One idea would be to connect them with lines. So I'm no longer drawing the dots, only the lines. This doesn't look like much yet, but I have a feeling once the three start to move a bit more chaotically in relation to each other, we'll see what we get here. I'm curious just what happens if I, um, um, let's, uh, if I do four movers and kind of put them in a, 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 like a bit of a diamond pattern. And I don't know what I expected to get, but I'm quite pleased with these interesting results. And I think there's a lot for you to sort of try and continue playing with. Just out of curiosity, let me go back to uh, making them random. So we can see with them random, I'm getting quite an unstable, chaotic system. I, I'm actually quite surprised how much it's staying within the canvas. In my experience with doing this, it's usually just going to kind of go crazy and fly off the handle. But you can see, I, but I think what I'm trying to emphasize here is that by thinking about the initial starting conditions of the system, the results that you get might have some symmetry or sort of character to them that you could really um, that you could take advantage of for a particular kind of design. And 
there it's off and running. Um, okay. So let me think about, though, how could I achieve something like what I started with but not have to individually assign all of the locations? Oh, I want to use polar coordinates here, but um, that's not something that um, I, could, I could give them random locations, though. OK, that's what I'm going to do. Um, Well, one way to do that would be to give all the x, y locations as randomly around the perimeter of a circle. And if you remember in my first videos about picking random vectors, I did something exactly like that. Let's have the mass be consistent between them all, just for right now. And I'm going to have a position. So basically, I'm picking a random vector. I'm stretching it out by 100. And then I'm adding the, the center of the canvas so that, it's, um, so that its location is relative to that. I'm going to take out the line for a second and just show the dots. Add the position. Let's not. I don't. Let's not update the locations for a second. All right. So that's not very many of them, <laughs> right? I should have like arranged them, spaced out perfectly around the circle. <laughs> but let's do fifty of them. So what happens if I arrange all the particles uh, this way? And what if their velocity? Hmm. Well, let's just see what happens with a random velocity. All right, it's kind of going out of control. Let's reduce the mass by quite a bit. Chaos ensues. I don't know if I really like this result. Oh, and it's almost 12.30. But I'm kind of getting to the end of this. Um, OK, I have a different idea. Let's arrange them all in a vertical line. So let's have x be in the center. Let's arrange them from top to the middle. Um, and let's have their velocities all point in the same direction. And I would like the ones that, as they get closer to the center, to have a higher mass. This did not work at all. I might have to come back and finish this. All right, hold on. Let's, let's not update them. Oh, yeah, this is what I was trying to do.
Oh, I forgot to turn the boiler off. Hold on. Yeah, um, uh, there's interesting stuff happening in the chat, but I will address that in a second. I times four. Yes, that's what I want to do. Um, okay, I times, uh, let's see. That's fine, let's. Oh, I made that so high. Let me put that. Let's make this a global variable. I'm going to make g a global variable because. Oh, hold on. I'm going to make g a global variable so I can fine tune it a bit more easily. It's really just one variable to like increase the overall strength or weakness of the gravitational attraction forces. Let's make that one. I'll make the initial velocity just one. Oh, you know what? They should be faster at the top, maybe. Map from i goes from 0 to 50. So they're going at a fast rate to the left there. Oh, and I could alternate. Uh, hold on. There's so many things I could do with the initial conditions. I'm getting kind of obsessed with this. Uh, down to uh, 0. Let's just very, let's put an update back. Yeah, I was sort of hoping for something more like this. It's kind of spinning out of control. I want that bottom particle. I could also like to be locked in a bit more. Uh, maybe I just don't want so many of them. Goodbye. Oh, let's have them alternate their directions. This is a nice little bit of code using modulo to have every other one go the other direction. There we go. I was looking for something more like this. Uh, and uh, let's have it go the whole way down. Increase the strength of gravity a little bit. Um, just going to make the ma I'm going to make the mass of all of them equal, um, and maybe a little bit bigger. Too big. Put g back to 1. <laughs> OK, you can see how you could do this forever. <laughs> Let's draw the lines one more time. Without the circles. Uh, that's a great suggestion, Laurent, though. I could also put, you know, I already have some artificial limits in the system. Like if I go here under mover, oh, sorry. Where is that? If I, I already have some artificial limits in the system. If I go look at the attract function, you'll remember that I used constrain to keep the range of the forces within some reasonable minimum and maximum range. 
I could also do something where I say this dot velocity limit and limit the velocity to some maximum speed, which might stabilize the system a bit more, not in a necessarily realistic way, but in a way that might allow me to sort of explore the kinds of patterns I could make. What does this look like without the trails? What does this look like with many, many, many more particles or mover? What does it look like with many, many more movers? Whoa, whoops. Oh, because my mapping, so I need a variable. Because whenever I'm mapping I, whoa, ah, look at this. Wait, why is it? Oh, what is going on? <laughs> ah, the system is collapsing under itself. These are the movers. We're adding the shakers. Yeah. Too powerful. Let's make it more powerful. Oh, yeah. Less powerful. Oh, it's stretching out. OK, so I, I've gone off the rails with this a bit. I'm way off the train track, if you will. So I hope that you're getting some ideas here. Um, I'm trying to think of where, how I want to end this. I kind of wanted to have them swirling around themselves. So the circle was actually kind of better. But, um, whoa. I can't stop is my problem. I'm trying to think, like, is there like an interesting place to end this? <laughs> I might have to come back and redo the end. Like play around with this more and like come to some sort of interesting conclusion. When I added the speed limiter, yeah, that's a, that's where it started collapsing. That's a good point. Um, Add a force along radius of orbit to each other. Do colors. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the reason why I wasn't doing polar coordinates later is, is because I, um, that's like chapter three, <laughs> and I didn't want to like introduce that here. Um, maybe I'll mention that. I got to wrap this up, though. So I can't stop playing with this. I have a, um, I have a feeling if you think about 
the initial conditions. You know, one thing I avoided you doing here was using polar coordinates, because that's actually something that's part of chapter three. So you might look ahead at that video. Then you could arrange all these movers in along, uh, um, then you could arrange all these movers in maybe starting a spiral pattern, some type of circular pattern. I'll try to show you some examples of how that might look. But really, if you add color, if you think about different shapes, the number of movers, um, there's a lot of possibilities here. I should mention that once you start to increase this total, for example, if I put this total at 500, um, the f I'm not even getting the first frame <laughs> because the amount of drawing is way too extensive. Let me see if I can hit stop here. I haven't crashed everything too horribly. Come on, stop. I want to um, stop recording and start recording again. Um, come on, I hope I saved this. I can always recreate it. Oh, stop. Don't go to auto refresh. 500 was way too much. Oh, wait, there we go. I stopped it. Come on, come back to me, browser. Come back to me, browser. <laughs> so that was so extreme. I think also drawing. Uh, 500 times 500 lines was crazy. <laughs> um, wait, wait, I think it's going to come back. Um, there we go, I got it back. No? What I wanted to emphasize was how just doing the force calculations of 500 particles against all other 500 is rather extreme. No, wait, wait, it's going to come back. <gasps> All right, I'm, now, I'm, now I'm no longer, I can't be patient anymore. I'm refreshing, oh, hold on. Let's just find out, like, oh, good. No, 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 we're in bad shape here. No, no, uh, where did I last save it? I can't tell if this is what I, yeah, no, this is what I last saved it as, right? So we're OK. Let's make this back five. Let me just see. Oh, yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. Also, I got it back. <laughs> but even without drawing the lines and just drawing them as dots, let me put it at 100 to be a bit more reasonable. Like, this works. Of course, they all collapse under each other because my initial conditions aren't that interesting. <laughs> Let me put it at 500. Now this is running slow, not just because of the drawing. Because if I comment out the forces, you can see that the frame rate is fine. What is incredibly slow about this Is the n oh, <laughs> sorry? Is the n squared? I, is the uh, is the is the order? Is the efficiency? <laughs> What's incredibly slow about this is the n squared efficiency of the algorithm, where every single mover needs to apply a force to every other mover. One hundred times one hundred. That's ten thousand computations. But if we were to optimize this using a quad tree and this sort of Barnes-Hutt algorithm, which I'll provide links in the description of references for that, including my quad tree video, we could reduce the complexity there enormously to be able to make this run fairly smoothly. Um, and I think I'm wrapping this up now. Um, I also want to reference this wonderful paper, Classification of Symmetry Groups for Planar N-Body Choreographies, 
What this paper shows is that with certain initial starting conditions, these beautiful symmetrical orbits, these, the dance of n bodies, if you will, that uh, result in these. Um, what this paper shows is that with certain initial conditions for various n body systems, these beautiful symmetrical dances occur. And there's a wonderful um, simulation of the of of and there's a wonderful simulation of many of these patterns created by Dan Grease for that particular paper. Now I'll note that these simulations are mapping the ex that these simulations are running. I'll note that these simulations are running through the trajectories based on. Um, um, let's. I don't know how to say this. I'll note that these. I'll note that these simulations are running through the trajectories based on the mathematical equations and not running through an actual physics simulation. But I mean, as, a, as an amazing sort of stretch goal here, maybe I could do this someday, maybe you're going to be inspired to try this, is could you look through this paper, find some of these initial conditions, and see how closely you can match different kinds of these um, beautiful um, dances. Let's try six on a square. Oh, I've got to try these. Oh, I have a whole project now to work on. I don't know, maybe this will come back in another video sometime. <laughs> All right, so this wraps up chapter two of the nature of code. Uh, you can move right on into chapter three. A lot of the um, aspects of chapter three in terms of looking at angles and rotations and orbital motion could really be applied to this particular visualization. If you make something from this video, check the link in the video description. It'll take you to a website where you can add a version of it, and I would love to see it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you sometime soon on the coding train. Goodbye. Okay. Um, 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 yes, I feel I said, don't worry, chat, I'll be done in five minutes, an hour ago. Okay, I have to go. I have a meeting in 15 minutes, 15 minutes to walk the dog, eat lunch. Thank you all for tuning in. I wish I could stay and like answer some questions. Oh, I gotta spin the wheel. I gotta spin the wheel. Hold on. Hold on. You can't not have the, maybe I need to do a separate Twitch stream since I've been doing that on Twitch. Um, remind me later, my goodness. Uh, oh boy, please. No, <laughs> please, history, have the randomizer in it. Let's see, show full history, um, local. Oh, why, why? Oh, wait, I did it this? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, but I want the specific page I went to. Oh, it's there. Beautiful. Just wanted to show you. Okay, so I can remove the end body problem. I can remove the Ulam spiral. And in theory, now I am about to spin <laughs> this wheel to pick the next thing I'm going to do. Let's see, what on here do I really not want to do? Oh, and I wanted to add the Kernigsberg bridge, but I guess I'll have to add, someone will remind me of that another time. Can I add that easily? Not right now. I don't have a system for adding something. Um, all right, geez. I don't know what I want to come up here. All right, here we go. I can't look. Oh, it's totally going to land on the slide puzzle solver. Why does it always land on the slide puzzle? Oh, it's going to falling sand. Is it going to hit Mandelbulb? Oh, Mandelbulb will be exciting. Keep going. Come on, Mandelbulb. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Oh, my God, the Mandelbulb is really hard. I'm going to have to just do it as a point cloud. I hope everybody will allow me to just do the Mandelbulb just as a point cloud. But that'll be the next coding challenge. I don't know when I'm going to record that because um, I might not be able to stream next Friday. But we'll see. <sighs> All right, everybody, I got to go. I'm going to play this, play you out. Thank you. Um, just a quick uh, thank you for uh, Brilliant for sponsoring today's live stream. And I'm going to go to this uh, goodbye music. 
and uh, just sort of race on out of here. I'll take a peek at the chat if anybody has any really important things they want to mention or ask about, but I will see you all soon. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, son. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, son. This dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, son, this dot, this dot, this dot, never forget this dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. I'm gonna say once again, here we go. Sing it with me. It's the forward Archimedes coordinate song. The forward to Archimedes coordinate songs. <coughs> Auto tune and the internet will fix that for me. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Archimedes. It's the forward to Archimedes coordinate song. It's the forward to Archimedes coordinate song.